It was a damp and cool weekend night between 10.30 and 11 p.m. I had been to a movie with a couple of friends and was walking home alone along Como Lake Road in Coquitlam through a particularly dark and unnerving part of the walk. I had been to Mundy Park, a large forest, was on one side of the road, and Dr. Charles Best, my old junior high school, also bordered by forest, was on the other side of the road. I had been jumped on these roads before, so I figured I would stay close to the school as that made me feel more comfortable. I would have to cross the baseball and soccer field, staying close to the forest, to continue my path home. As I got to the field, where it was darker, a bulbous-headed creature, short and thin, literally fell from the sky and landed on its two feet several paces in front of me to my left. What happened next was pure terror and panic. I couldn't have moved more than a foot or two when I was frozen in my attempt to get away, one leg bent in the air, arms out, full running position, and yet I didn't fall over. I was being suspended in the air somehow. I didn't understand it at the time, but buried or sealed memories were being opened by this thing's presence, and those memories were of childhood contact events that I wasn't even aware had occurred, having been kept from my everyday awareness. Being frozen put me into a state of downright terror and I began pushing with all my might to move. I heard it say in my head, you won't be able to move no matter how hard you try. My panic increased and I tried even harder to push. It reassured me with sincerity and concern. It's okay, we're not gonna harm you, we're friendly. Hearing this made me stop fighting and that's when I mustered up the courage to look at this thing. With my eyes having adjusted to the dark and the city lights reflecting off the low-lying clouds, I could clearly make out a four-foot-tall creature with an alien face. Big head, large, downward-pointing, piercing black eyes, cheekbones, small slits for a nose, and a small mouth. Humans are strongly conditioned to witnessing our type of face, but this creature's mouth and nose were grossly disproportionate to the eyes and head. No picture one sees does justice to the actual experience of witnessing one of these faces. It was highly disturbing. As I stood there staring at it, childhood memories flooded in and I realized I recognized this being. It said, Come with us, come with us to our ship. Staring blankly at it, in too much shock to respond and fearing for my life, it said one more time with sincerity and friendliness, Come with us to our ship. We will bring you right back. As I stood there, I recalled a memory of being on their ship at a very young age, possibly five or six, and I was safe. It was as if it gave me a moment to remember, like it was trying to say, you know us from before, and we've shown you that we're safe. As I was staring at its dark black eyes, which induced in me feelings of mysticism, wonder, and amazement, I realized that this might be interesting. Just like that, the youthful risk-taker in me decided to trust this, and I said, Okay. With a bright flash, I was gently but quickly pulled up by a force, passing the treetops and into the low-lying clouds with their cold, moist air on my skin. The force slowed the closer I got to a large, pitch-black object, which I could now see above me and I realized with surprise the being must have come from this object, even though I couldn't hear or see it from the ground. The craft was so large I could not see it in its entirety, yet I presumed it was a V-shaped winged craft from the angle I was looking at it from beneath its belly. An orange-amber circular-colored light glowed underneath, and the craft itself was so black it could hide in the night sky. I experienced an overwhelmingly joyful surge of energy, which I knew was connected to me praying to be abducted. It wasn't a joyful surge, because my prayer was answered. It was joy from some deeper part of me that knew it was time for whatever this was to occur. That was the desire behind why I prayed for that which I didn't know about. I could only define this energy surge now as the first time I experienced my spirit though I didn't understand it like that at the time. It showed me I was connected to what was happening in a much larger and deeper way that was new to me. I then was teleported into the ship. I then found myself standing in a small hangar with a tan curved wall, roughly 60 feet long, 
There were five small, shiny silver pod-like crafts on tripods, tightly packed together, on my left. Five beings stood in front of me, with one standing out in shape from the other four. It was about four feet tall, with a large head that formed an elongated cone on the back, and wearing tight-fitting tan coveralls, with a light red band down the middle of the suit and down the arms. I presumed this was the one who had approached me. The other four were smaller, roughly three and a half feet tall, with large cranium heads but without the cone shape, dressed in tight, pale, green-gray coveralls. All were hairless, had slits for mouths, flat noses, and black, reflective, down-angled eyes. The taller being greeted me with, Hi, Jeff! emphasizing that it knew who I was and that I had a history with them. I was apprehensive as I tried to grasp what was going on, not just in my present circumstances, but also inside myself, with my feelings and memories. They were trying to make me feel comfortable. I heard, Welcome. Thanks for coming with us. You won't regret it. We've come to help you at this time. The feeling was of incredible friendliness and kindness, but it didn't make sense to me when this being said it was here to help me at this time. It talked like it knew me. They invited me to accompany them, abruptly turning around and walking away, and as I followed, I noticed they were slim, having soft, insect-like arms and legs. In my memory, the entire place had an indescribable vibe. Alien, advanced consciousness, and advanced technology. The entire craft felt alive. We walked into a bright hallway and then turned left through an arched doorway. I briefly reflected to myself. That was easy. We entered a clean room with two curved desks molded to the floor, placed at right angles to each other, and behind one of the desks was a large black screen and a single office-like chair made for someone their size. I was confused as the being with the elongated cone clearly wanted to show me something pointing for me to come to the wall where there was a computer panel while the four smaller beings gathered behind us. It touched a button, and I saw a holographic projection of abstract images protrude out from the panel. It said in my head, This is the reason why you are here. I distinctly felt that this being had a female presence, that it was a woman. I would later feel clearly that it was an elder, stateswoman-like, a chief, or a being with power, and refer to her from this point on as the Elder. I was amazed by this hologram as I had never seen anything like it before. The hologram displayed a row of images, a blue cuboid, three-dimensional rectangle, a red cuboid, a white comet, and a white dot. She emphasized their importance. This is what we are here to help you with. This is your future outline of things to come. I was highly uncomfortable with the way she was speaking in my head, was on edge, and didn't trust them. They moved in a strange, controlled manner, emphasized with their insect-like physique, which I found off-putting. When she said she knew my future, I didn't believe her. Who can see the future? Also, why the hell was it so immediately personal? Something you don't expect from an event like this. I turned around and saw the smaller beings behind me, and they freaked me out, leaving me feeling terrified and trapped on an alien ship. I said out loud, I want to go. She reached her arm out compassionately, telling me it was okay. She moved her head with an intent to focus on her eyes, like she was pushing their energy out to grab my attention. When I did, it calmed me down as I actually felt I could connect with this being behind the strange and frightening look. She said, We will not harm you. There is nothing to be scared of. I assure you we are friendly. I could feel her sincerity and truthfulness when I focused on her eyes. Feeling scared, but also curious, I decided to be brave and trust her, asking her what these holograms were, though I still couldn't believe that they could see my future. She said, it is your destiny to leave the place you're growing up in, and a future life will occur somewhere else. I stared into her eyes trying to understand the communication. By the way, believe it or not, these words like destiny and soul are her words. They weren't in my vocabulary at the time. 
she continued, These are your time periods we would like to work with you in. We are interested in here, here, and here, referring to the first three holographic images of the four. She pointed to the blue cuboid and said, This is where we help you. As a hologram, it was represented as roughly six inches of blue-colored data and strands of light, which I simply could not understand. She then pointed at the red cuboid, represented as a hologram of red-colored data and strands of light, and said, Then we will help you leave your home, and we would like to watch you as you grow. You will be free from your societal ideas to create what we provide for you. Leave my home? As a 16-year-old teenager, these ideas were far off from my mind. She didn't explain the last two holograms. One a comet-type image with a long tail that fanned out, and the other a single star-like dot. I was so perplexed at these images of my timeline as they had no meaning to me, yet all I understood was something in my future seemed important to them. She said, This is your destiny that we will help make happen together. While we help you, you will help us by allowing us to watch you as you grow. What else would you like to know? Considering this to be real, I asked how she would make me leave. She explained, You will discover your soul, which will propel you to leave. We will help you create an identity that you will use to do this. As a teenager, I believed in a soul, but had no comprehension of what it was. Yet, at the same time she spoke telepathically, I could feel her and was finding her sincere and kind. I asked, why me? We find this to be an opportunity to grow one of our own, she said, as she opened a childhood memory of an event that occurred behind my friend's house when I was five or six years old. This event was not in my mind before this night, but I could feel it did occur. In this memory, one of these beings showed me an image in my child mind of my mother on a table, conscious and smiling. She was pregnant with me and was being injected with a giant needle going into her womb, thus indicating I had something of these beings put into me when I was a fetus. As I calmed down, I began to realize the extent that they had been hiding in the background of my childhood, which was why there was a familiarity with this being. She continued, We want to help one of our own. We have been watching you, and we like you. Your personality and characteristics match what we are looking for. As I stood there with the Elder, the reality dawned on me that something was within me, and that this seemed right. Putting the pieces together, my mind raced with telling people, friends, and family of this incredible experience. She said, If you agree to work together, you won't remember our experiences. It caught me off guard that she seemed to respond to my thoughts. You will only remember these events when we meet with you. It will be in secret. This will benefit both of us. Do you agree to work together? In essence, these beings saw an opportunity for an exchange. They would help me with a transition they saw in my future if I agreed to be part of an experiment where they helped me discover my soul, which they would use to study and analyze me. I had no comprehension of what they were truly asking of me, yet I could now see childhood memories of these beings, and in them I was never hurt. I felt special that they had been hiding in the background of my life without my everyday awareness, and so rationalized with such ability, they were in charge anyway. I was aware right away that this was beyond getting permission from my parents or getting permission from anyone. This seemed so big, and I was already a part of it without even knowing. I was on edge from the strangeness of all of this, but I wanted to see where it went. I said, okay, I want to work with you. By opening to her, I felt her warm presence, like she was patting me on the back in psychic form. She further explained the agreement. Our exchange won't be for nothing. What we will give you, we will provide you now. Then, we will slowly open you to it over time. We have been working on this plan for some time, and we know you won't regret it. Our work with you will benefit our understanding of humankind. I asked, is there anything I should do? She said, keep your heart and mind open to learn new things. I asked, can you tell me who you are? She said, we are humanity's agents of change. 
She then showed me a giant cog on this holographic device. Throughout my contact events, the beings would use symbols and imagery by use of consciousness holograms, demonstrating their understanding of the impact on the human subconscious. When I stared at them, they connected on a deeper level in my being, giving me subconscious information which I can interpret through feeling. The best analogy for these holograms are computer avatars or programs that are read by my soul. Presently, this giant cog hologram reminds me of the Mayan calendar. I don't know if it was this or not, as I didn't see Mayan imagery, but I could feel it meant that a new era or age has come upon humanity. In the depth of the image, I could feel that humans are in a stage of evolution that was spiritual in nature, and that at the center of this change was our collective planetary identity as human beings, she continued. You will play a part in helping us understand humans as they move into an evolution of the soul. You will also benefit by evolving your soul. Your evolution will also take place. I distinctly felt from her words, combined with the hologram, that I would be a part of something larger, one of millions of humans with a similar mission to help evolve humanity. She then projected an image into my mind, another form of communication I would continue to experience in my contact events, in which a detailed image is projected that I can see in my mind's eye, containing rich feelings that I can interpret. She projected an image of the planet Earth, with images of an ape and a human silhouetted over top. I interpreted this to mean that the scale of evolution which is about to occur is comparable to ape to human, just not biological. We began leaving the room when she turned to me and locked eyes. She said, We are birthing a new idea, a concept never before spoken of between our species and yours. No one will know about this, and it will only be effective when it's blocked from your mind. So we will be blocking it, and we want you to help us with that. We want you to never look at this. If you have any questions about it, turn your mind away from it. Take care of it. We must protect it for it to work properly. I sensed the urgency of protection that the other me couldn't know and agreed. When we left this room, I was filled with purpose, determination and respect for the protection of our agreement. In 2016, they will release this command, which is how you are reading this now. Post titled, My entire family of six remembers being abducted and woke up with the same mystery scar. I've had the exact same reoccurring nightmare since I was three. I wake up in my bed because something is tapping on the window. We were on the second story, above the giant hill, next to the Mount Airy Water Towers on Colerain Ave. There were no trees or branches that could have been tapping it. I sat up in bed and looked over. My sister was already sitting up, staring straight at the window. I remember asking her what it was. She had no idea. We sat there whispering for a little bit, terrified, because whatever this was, was definitely trying to get our attention. I get up and go to the window. She tries to stop me, but gets up with me. As we are standing there to the bottom right corner, it looked like something was there, but it was making itself invisible. You could almost see an outline of this thing with like a little bean-shaped head, probably three feet tall. The tapping is still happening. And just as it felt like it was about to show itself, the brightest light I have ever seen began shining through the window behind us, to the left where my brothers were sleeping. They both sat straight up and started screaming. We started screaming. My dad and mom came running into the room and made us run to the bedroom, across the hall. We ducked down next to the bed, all of us panting, trying to be quiet. But within 20, 30 seconds, the light began shining through the window in that room. We all started screaming, and our dad made us run downstairs. We were running from room to room, hiding from this giant spotlight. Like, when this light hit the room, there were no shadows anywhere the light touched. That's how bright this thing was. We eventually ended up in this giant room the house had that reminded me of an old ballroom. I'm not sure if that's what it was or not, but it was bigger than the giant living room and dining room together and had a tile floor. We kept that room completely empty. It gave off bad vibes. We hid in there for maybe less than one minute before my dad made the decision. We were going to make a run for it. 
It was no longer safe in the house. It had one door that led outside, and I remember being so scared because someone had broken the window on the door before and there was broken glass on the patio. I asked about it, they said don't worry about it, but I was like, we are barefoot, in pajamas in the middle of the night, what is even happening? My dad counted down from three, opened the door, and we all silently made a run for it down the hill. I remember how it was chilly, yet warm, probably spring summertime. I remember the cold, wet grass on my feet as I ran. I was crying because I couldn't keep up, and every time I cried, my dad would pick me up. I began crying, and he stopped me, came down to my three-year-old level, grabbed my shoulders, and whispered sternly, Sam, I cannot carry you. You are slowing me down. You have to be quiet, or they will find us. I was about to cry. I'm like, who TF are they? He picked me up one last time, and I looked back at the house over his shoulder. It was a crystal clear night. You could see every star. But there was this huge storm cloud above the house, and only above the house in a circular shape, with the spotlight coming from it, frantically searching from window to window, trying to find us. He puts me down again and we run. The rest of my family is at the bottom of the hill already, but we catch up and he tells us to go into the woods on our right. There was a fitness trail that led to the apartments behind the house. I looked up when we got to the stairs. My dad tells us to split up. My oldest brother and sister ran to the left. My middle brother and my mom ran to the right. My dad and I went straight. Six people, not seven, sorry. We're trying to be as quiet as possible, but I was so scared that just trying to catch my breath would make them hear us. We're all standing in the woods, barefoot in pajamas, hiding from some light when it starts to come toward us. I remember closing my eyes and being like, please don't find us, please don't find us. But when I opened them, the light was already making its way to the woods where we were hiding. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, they're gonna find us. So in my tiny brain, I was like, maybe it's better if they just find us anyway. I step away from the tree and screamed. My siblings from each side started yelling at me to shut up. My dad came over to grab me and the light started shining on us. My entire family ran over and my dad hugged us all as the light got brighter and everything went white. Then I wake up, over and over, for years. Until I was 18, eventually the dream would change and the light would be replaced with whatever I was scared of at the time. T-Rex from Jurassic Park, Beetlejuice is the snake, and if they looked through the window and saw you, you were caught. I remember a random day we woke up and my brother and I had the same scar on our arm, exact same spot, length and size. We giggled because we both had a little patch of nothing on our arms that matched that popped up overnight. We had no memory of where this came from. Got to looking, every single one of us have it. Mom, dad, two girls, two boys. Same spot, no memory of how we got it. It caused all kinds of problems. I was terrified of running for years. In elementary school, we would have to run laps for gym class, and every single time we had to, I would just break down and start crying because I couldn't keep up. I was terrified of my gym teacher because he would laugh at me and be like, well, Sam is crying again. Go sit on the wall. That's where they threw people that didn't have gym shoes. So I eventually purposely began wearing the wrong shoes. I'd have panic attacks if he tried to make me run. Fast forward to about 25 years old. My dad, sister, and I are sitting at the table eating dinner at our family farm. We were talking about all of the paranormal things that happened in that house when I brought up the dream I kept having. I started with, I know it's just a dream, but the entire time we lived in that house, I had this reoccurring nightmare that I woke up in the middle of the night. My sister cut me off and said, and something was tapping on the window. I was like, what the SF, she continued. Something was tapping on the window and woke us up, but it was like making itself invisible. We went back and forth, finishing each other's sentences. She mentioned dad making us run outside in the middle of the night, and she even told me. Chris and I went left, mom and Nick went right, and you and dad ran straight while. We looked over at my dad and he was frozen. His face was white as a ghost. I asked him if B remembered it too, and he slowly put his fork down and said, something like that. Every single one of us remember it, and it made so much sense. My siblings started being really, really mean to me, yes, after that experience, straight up hateful. And they said it's because all I did was cry, but it's because I got us caught. I have other memories from after that. 
It was weird. We woke up in this place that looked like a hospital. All white floors and walls, whoever we were with, separated us from our parents and took us to this room with glass windows. They stood outside and just watched us in silence and didn't say a word. The room was filled with other kids. They were silent. All of them had bleach blonde hair and blue eyes, but no other facial hair, like no eyebrows or eyelashes. Everything just seemed off about them. After standing there in silence, watching these kids silently play with toys, it clicked. I was like, oh, they just want us to play with them. I ran over to a little girl and said, hi. My sister yelled at me and tried to stop me, but I was like, nah, man, this is cool as hell. We got woken up to play with toys and other kids. Their toys were weird. There was like a bouncy balls, fire truck, other random kids toys. But then there were other things I had never seen. They were just like shapes with weird colors. But when you touch them, they made you feel a certain feeling. Like straight up voodoo magic. They made you feel an emotion. They weirded me out, lol. Everyone else eventually kind of gave in and interacted with the kids, but they were so on edge. And I didn't understand why, because I was three. They were using us to teach them how to act like children. They didn't understand laughter or why we did it. They couldn't laugh. That's all I remember is that they didn't understand how or why we would laugh, or why playing made us laugh. I started reading a book I got off of Amazon called The Threat. I went in just thinking it was BS. It took me six months to even finish because it was just so boring and seemed too far out there, but there are sections in the book that brought me back like, um, it mentioned people being in rooms with kids playing with toys. It mentioned the weird ones that you touched and made you feel feelings. It mentioned a lot of things I remember and kept to myself. It even mentioned things I'm not willing to talk about. And this book is basically people being put under hypnosis. And the notes this doctor took of them remembering what happened to them. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Feel free to ask any questions. I'm all for it. Back in September 2020, I went to bed normally as I usually did. I fell asleep after 10 minutes or so. I woke up at around 3 a.m. and I was lying in bed looking at the ceiling, but my head was somewhat tilted to the right. I could see my nightstand, my lamp and my clock in my peripheral vision, and my clock said three something. I couldn't see further to the right than that. I woke up with a very bizarre, dreadful feeling, and I felt like I was vibrating from head to toe. I thought to myself, God, I hate sleep paralysis, here we fucking go. I told myself in my head, wake up, wake up, wake up. But then it dawned on me, I was completely consciously awake, looking at my ceiling in my bed. I was frozen and could not move. My eyes were open and they were the only thing I could move. Then the vibration feeling got more intense and I felt like I was buzzing. It felt like when one of your limbs falls asleep, but this was a whole body sensation. I started panicking. This was new to me. I've had sleep paralysis before, but this was different. Then I felt myself lift off my bed. The amount of dread I began to feel in that moment is unexplainable. I had a thought enter into my mind that's akin to you are being taken. I was screaming internally, trying to resist whatever was happening. I continued to rise off my bed, and I felt my body rise above to where I couldn't feel my bed at all. My eyes were getting closer to the ceiling, closer, closer. Then all of a sudden it went dark. I passed through the ceiling, but now I was looking down at our rooftop. I was rising in the air slowly but steadily. Once I probably got to about 250 feet above my house, the fear completely left me, and I could see straight down to the rooftops. I thought to myself, from this perspective, our neighborhood looks very bizarre. Probably because we never really are that high up in the air to see downward from that vantage point. My body began rotating again as I was continually rising, and now I assume I was probably 500 plus feet in the air. As my eyesight came to facing the sky above, I saw a silver greyish disc which had a black opening in the center of it. I got closer to the craft and closer, then I entered it and everything went black again. When I came to, I was looking down at the earth from space. I was on the craft but I was looking through a transparent glass material in which I could see earth and space in front of me, underneath me, and above me. It's as if I was free floating in space, but I was aware my feet were on a platform of some kind. 
As I was looking at the earth through this material, three beings come up to from behind. I knew there was three, because they introduced themselves to me telepathically, but didn't show themselves. I know it sounds stupid, but I cannot explain this part of an Introduction. There were two males, one female, and they were all around seven plus feet tall. If I had to take a guess, I would assume they were Nordics, but that's just conjecture on my part since they only relayed their gender and height. In my mind, one of the males told me something which I can only translate to come and see or come and look. It might be a variation of we want to show to something, but they spoke in my mind with feelings and imagery, if that makes sense. I understood their feelings in my mind was for me to come and look. And in an instance we rapidly accelerated from Earth as if we experienced warp drive in Star Wars, but no, it didn't look blue and swirly. Earth just became so distant so fast that I was blown away. I blacked out, or I should say I don't know what happened between this part and the next. When I came to again, I was looking through this transparent material once again, but this time I was looking at a totally different planet than Earth. Earth looks blue from afar and has vast oceans. This planet looked to be green all around. While looking down at this planet, the beings said once again, come and see. And we began to approach the planet very quickly. We passed into the atmosphere and flew down seamlessly. No trouble at all and zero resistance. And when we came closer to the surface, we were above a large body of water. I could see the sun glistening off the water, and the water looked very vibrantly blue and healthy, and I thought, Jesus, that water is beautiful. The being said to me in my mind, this water has not been altered in any way, shape or form. It is in its most natural and perfect state. I was amazed by how it looked. The craft started moving, and I could see us flying over the water at an incredible speed. Out far in the distance, I could see a landmass appear, and getting closer and closer. Once we were close enough, I could see these weird buildings on the edge of the land. The land looked super bizarre. It looked like a deep, foresty jungle, but there wasn't a beach. It just went straight from water to endless, thick, green jungle. There were these crystalline-looking buildings near the water that resembled the top half of a top. The architecture looked super strange because usually buildings have squared elements to them, but these looked like they were smooth and seamless, as if it were one single material with no screws, frames, etc. I tried recreating what I saw and got close, but the image doesn't do it justice. After flying over this view with the buildings and the land, we approached what I think was a hangar of some sort. We landed and the being said, we are here, come and see. Then I was in a futuristic looking city. The design of this city looked like it didn't infringe on nature, as if the building itself was integrated with nature. This is very hard to describe. I found a picture that references what I was seeing slightly. As we entered this structure, we came into the middle of the structure and it was as if we were in a gathering hub or center. There were hundreds and hundreds of people there. They looked to be regular humans all Caucasian, fair complexion. They were all wearing these purple-ish royalty-looking robes, and it looked so funny but also so intriguing, as if all the people were royalty, but it looked fashionable. I cannot find a picture of what I saw that even resembles this part. All of the people were walking around the city square, and they would pass by each other and exchange pleasantries. Example, hey, how are you? Nice to see you etc etc. The weird part is they were all talking to each other without opening their mouths. I asked the beings, how can I hear them? The beings responded with, it's their form of what you would call a hive mind, but it's different than what you are thinking. They portrayed to me that they are all connected via a link, think New Era link, but still had their autonomy. It was like a central communication device they all had in which they could talk, understand each other, conversate essentially through telepathy, which is just advanced technology. They explained to me that it's essentially like calling someone on a cell phone, but the device medium is no longer handheld but in them. They didn't explain anything further. I also saw persons holding glass pads that were just see-through clear glass. I have no idea what they were, I would assume it's like a version of their iPad, but I didn't see any lights or anything else on them. 
In the central portion of the city, I saw that these people kept approaching this floating glass boxes. These floating glass boxes emitted a light beam from one box to another. They were all separated by maybe 25 feet or so. They would approach the box, open the front portion of it, and stick their hand into the light. The beings said, this is their version of what the internet is to you. They transmit data and information via light. I know that part sounds ridiculous, and I don't know how they download info from light. That's just what the being said. As I continued to observe the people walking around, going to and fro, the being said, these people have achieved global peace. There are no wars, no illness. Everyone understands each other, and they have perfected society. They do not infringe on nature, but work with nature. They are more advanced than Earth, but not by much. While the being was telling me this, I got a flash of understanding, or an image in my mind of Earth being behind, due to the reasons stated above. It felt like these beings were wanting to show me that there is advanced civilization out there that figures it out and progresses beyond self-destruction. They showed me also that everyone works together to a degree, and everyone plays a part in society with the main goal of progression. A good analogy is this. It is as if Earth right now is on old, rusty, broken-down Honda Civic with torn-up seats, and this planet and this civilization is a brand-new, all-electric Lamborghini. Terrible analogy, I know. I saw men and women working together in what I assume is just a futuristic-looking platform. There was a handpad thing that used light beams to control something in the city. Once again, I don't have vocab to describe what I was seeing. Everything was so melded together. Everything worked by light or with light. They worked with light like a potter works with clay. I don't even know how to explain what I saw. I tried my best. The beings then took me outside to where I could see the mountainous jungle surrounding the building, and there was a large mountain to the north that had a machine that was rhythmically tapping the mountain. I have no idea what this was for or what it was doing. I got the feeling it was vibrating the earth because when it hit the ground, I could feel a pulse and the earth move. It was sending out vibrations, but I didn't hear anything more about this. The machine looked like a boxing glove machine from an arcade mixed with a giant excavator, but all crystalline in appearance. The beings then told me it's time to go back, and we went back to the disk and left the island, then went back into the atmosphere, then into space. Once again, I saw this planet become smaller and smaller as we zoomed away. In a flash, I could see we were approaching Earth again, and we descended into Earth's atmosphere, and the beings once again said, Come and see. We were now above the Big Ben in London at night time. We must have been about one to two thousand feet above it. There was scaffolding around Big Ben like it was under construction. As I was looking at Big Ben through the glass, the beings started talking to each other, and this time I could hear it perfectly. One of the male beings was laughing and said to the other two, It's always funny to me that we are right here this close, and the people down there have no idea we are here. After that was said, they said, It's time for you to go back. It felt like teleportation how fast we travelled back to my home. It was almost instant, and I could see my rooftop below. They didn't say goodbye or anything, and I felt myself leave the craft almost the exact same way I entered. The deep vibration feeling, the physical locking, etc. I descended from the craft while looking up at it, and I saw myself exit the bottom, and I felt myself getting closer and closer to my roof. I passed through the roof and saw myself enter my room, and as soon as I hit my bed, I panicked and jumped out of bed, like you see in horror movies. The time was then 3.40, and I paced around my room asking myself what in the actual fuck just happened. It didn't feel like a dream at all, it was way too vivid and clear, and I was conscious through this experience. These events occurred a handful of times that I can remember from about ages 8 to 13. Most went down like this. Wake up randomly in the middle of the night, no crazy lights outside or anything, just this sense of, there's people in here. I hear a commotion like little kids scampering around me. I do not want to open my eyes, but they open anyway. I have a nightlight so there's some illumination. Body frozen in place, 
except free movement of my eyes and my neck ever so slightly can move. Three of the beings that look 100% exactly like the pick I shared. One at the left, one at the right, and one at the foot of the bed, all slightly under four feet, if I had to guess. I scream bloody murder, but my voice doesn't work. My mouth doesn't open. They can hear it though. I get from them something like, why do we have to go through this every time? It's time to go. It's fine. You know it's fine. You know you're coming back. Words can't really describe what this communication is like. It feels like a combination of your internal dialogue voice beamed back at you, coupled with another bizarre, sterile, uncanny valley voice, and literal emotions being communicated plus mind's eye visual concepts directly projected into you. All this, all at once. It's fucking terrifying. Again, words can't convey. I think heightened negative emotional states really fuck up what they're trying to accomplish, or make it extremely difficult, or extensively prolong the visit, and they don't like it. So they make every effort to try and calm you down as much as possible. But what the hell really? You put someone through that and expect calm compliance. But again, they are non-human. They're operating on an entirely different wavelength, vibe, philosophy, completely alien to our own. So now I'm like three feet off my bed, levitating like the exorcist. I'm headed feet first into the bedroom wall and there's nothing I can do about it. I'm screaming about being crushed into the wall and I get the voice. Again, with the wall concerns, you see a wall, but what is a wall? This sounds funny when I try to explain it, but it can assure you it's horrifying David Lynch level of dark surrealism. Plus, I'm nine years old, and this thing is asking me rhetorical Socratic questions. All this while, I literally go through the wall of our house like it was a mirage, floating in the backyard like I'm on an invisible hospital gurney. Same formation of three beings, like at the bed. Get to a certain point in the yard, and my entire body gets an intense pins and needles feeling, like the hardcore ones, when you can't feel your legs when walking but your entire body. Consciousness off like a light switch. Come to, I'm on a smooth bench thing that's part of the formation of the wall, if that makes sense. I can move my neck a lot more now. There are no doors anywhere, but rounded doorways, arches. Everything is smooth and round in here, and I can just tell I'm in something huge. I can see that there's way more through the doorways. It's slightly warm and slightly dim. There's light but no light sources anywhere. There's palpable, hazy, moisture-ish thing going on. And the smell is distinct and hard to describe, like wet pennies, metallic-ish and electric. I know you can't smell electricity, but imagine if you could. A being comes in, identical head as the others, but this thing is like six fit three. My heart is beating out of my chest and I scream. This time, my voice works. I get from him a sad and kind of offended. We're friends, remember. Instantly get this deluge of memories, playing some kind of patty cake hand game with him. Him showing me a kind of mental PowerPoint presentation that's like a game, but informative. He sees I remember and he's less upset. Now one of the most horrifying aspects of this experience, in walks this light, pastel green skinned, eight feet tall creature wearing a jet black flowing robe that a ritual occultist would wear. 24 inch plus wide head, shaped like a guitar pick, with pitch black eyes the size of mini footballs at each end of the head. Two tiny dots for a nose, three inch slit for a mouth. Its knee joints were backwards like a grasshopper, and its fingers were like eight inches long. And for whatever reason, the fingers were constantly moving ever so slightly so absolutely creepy and unnerving. There's no question this thing runs the show. I get from him sympathy, understanding, and I know this sucks, I'm sorry. If there is anything human-like or relatable, in any way it's him. But holy shit, is he terrifying looking. Black out again. I'm on a table. It feels like metal, but it's oddly comfortable. Big light casting down on top of me. It's not blindingly bright but brighter than anything else I've seen in this place. I'm naked. I hate the fact that I'm naked. 
guitar pick head creature hovering over me with my old friend Mr. Tall White in the background. Devices seem to come at me from different directions. Floor, ceiling, can't get a good look at what they look like. Definitely diagnostic tools of some kind. Tall White Hands guitar pick a rectangular silver box. The box contains a 10 inch long tapered wand thing. Nope, fucking nope. I do not want the wand. Guitar pick assures me, hey bud, I know you hate this, but remember, it's never as bad as you think. Guitar pick also the only being with what could kind of be called a sense of humor. I ask him why. WTF is that? What are you doing? The response is bizarre and kind of funny, and I really don't know how to convey it. He shows me a scene from my favorite movie at the time, Robocop. Specifically the scene where Bob Morton tells Robocop, you're gonna be a bad motherfucker. I think the intent was to make me feel cool, like a superhero, a way to distract from the fear and the horrific invasiveness. I swear to God, this wand goes four inches into my head. Semi-painful, not at all pleasant. As this happens, I feel zaps and pops at regular intervals that gradually increase. I wake up, back at home in bed. My pajamas and underwear are on backwards. It's late morning, I'm groggy. My parents wonder why I slept in so late because I'm normally up at the crack of dawn to watch cartoons. That's a typical visit. There's more to it, but that's all I'm up for revisiting right now. It's traumatic and I still don't know what to make of it. The first post, titled, I think I was abducted as a kid. Not sure if I've ever really posted about this before, I actually didn't make any sort of connection until I got into the UFO alien thing. As a kid, I used to have crazy dreams, nightmares, from a clown visiting me, phasing through the walls, grabbing me and turning everything to colors, to a large praying mantis taking me away to a white house. I remember it taking me to this white house that had a white room, and I remember laying down on a white bed, completely still. I remember seeing this praying mantis above me from behind, phasing in through whatever barrier was behind the bed and just looking down at me. It had white skin and it looked just like a mantis. I never really thought anything of it until these past couple years when I started getting deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole of this phenomenon. I'd like to know if anyone has ever seen or heard of something like this. Post two. My hypnoregression of my abduction. I'll start this off by saying this was nothing like what I expected a hypnoregression to be. And the things I revisited, the things I remembered that happened to me, I found out were very traumatic to me as a kid. Even revisiting it now gave me a severe panic attack. But the hypnoregression therapist worked his magic. And while working through the hyperventilation, I was able to revisit my abduction as a kid and get the answers I needed. However, I'm now filled with more questions than answers. I saw myself at six years old being escorted down this very cold, dark metallic hallway. I was able to look down, saw that I was naked and I saw my own legs, but they were my legs as a kid. There were also large gray colored pipes that ran the length of the wall in this hallway. And towards the end of the hall, there were people walking back and forth down an adjacent hallway. As I approached them, I passed by a window to my right, and as I looked out, I could see the blackness of space and the earth below me to the left. When I got to this group of people, I started to notice they weren't quite human people. They looked very similar, but there was just something about their face that I just knew they weren't human. They were going about their business, holding some sort of pads, whether they were clipboards, tablets, or whatever, they looked up at me with a shocked slash angry slash scared expression and said, hey, you're not supposed to be here. That's when I was escorted back by these two smaller people about my height. They took me to a large room where I saw two more of these smaller people and a large praying mantis looking person. As I approached the room, the smaller people turned to look at me and I saw the mantis going about its business arranging tools, screens, and other things. Like how a doctor would set up before an operation, just getting everything together. The smaller beings took me inside the room and did all kinds of tests on me. They handed me a small black box, and when I opened it, 
a bunch of images, screens, charts, numbers, videos, and all kinds of things were flying out of it like a fountain of light. I had no idea what any of it meant, and these two small people were staring at me the whole time. I can still see their faces in perfect detail. I swear they look just like little kids. Small, flat, circular, head structure, large circular golden yellow and brown eyes, with a small circle of white around the eye. They had large brows with no hair, small jaws, small mouths, and they had small indents behind the jaw, near the side of the head, that looked like ear holes or something. Their skin was tinted a leathery grey, but it was sand, light brown coloured, almost like a cashew. They were just watching me, studying me. This whole time, the hypnoregression therapist was guiding me through this experience, asking me questions about what I see, what I'm doing, and was also having me ask them questions. The typical, who are you, what is your purpose, etc. To my surprise, they were able to answer me. This started giving me more and more panic because this whole time I can feel my body shaking and I knew I was hyperventilating. I was scared out of my mind, but the therapist did a good job of bringing me back when things got too intense. They look human, but they are not, and they've been studying us a long time. The humanoid being told me the mantis comes from a pink planet, but I could not make out its name. They study science, light technology, they're teachers, neither good nor bad. My therapist asked why I was chosen. I told him it was part of the plan. I left out some things that were a little too personal. After 15 years, this experience has really shattered my reality. Post 3. My Abduction, Part 2. So, let me start this off with a real quick PSA. I don't care if you believe me or not, I'm going to share my experience. That said, I had my second hypnoregression session today to revisit my alien abduction when I was six, and I remember everything. I thought I had a clear picture last time, but I was wrong. This second session had me face the entire thing without fear. I was six years old, and this took place sometime between 2001 and 2002 in Washington State, USA. I remember seeing a blinding bright white light fill my entire room and illuminate everything in it. Then, I remember seeing these two small people appear out of nowhere, standing in my room next to my window, and I hear a resounding voice in my head say, come with us. Next thing I know, I remember floating up through the roof of my house, seeing the entire city below me, the feeling of weightlessness, bliss, confusion, fear, and excitement, all at the same time. I remember going into this large white room with bright lights and small silver orb crafts with small fins around the bottom sides lining the wall, maybe five or six of them. At this point, I remember running out of there and into a hallway, frantically pushing past what I assumed to be other grown-ups. I remember hearing them gasp in surprise as I pushed past them. And that's when I remember running up to this large window. I looked out, trying to get a sense of where I was. And I, all I saw was space and the earth below me. I remember being scared, running away and into another group of these people where one stood up, said, whoa, you're not supposed to be here. They grabbed me, soothed me, with this weird sensation of being under a waterfall of smoke that tingles the entire body as it washes over you. They said their name was Arik and held me there until the two smaller people showed up. At this point, I think they did something to me because I couldn't move at all. I remember being floated or carried back down the hallway and into this large room with a strange brown light that glowed in the whole room. They laid me down on top to a bed and that's where this large mantis-like being was there, wearing some kind of robe, coat. I remember being scared, bit somehow okay with it, but I had this warm, hazy feeling still. I remember being held down by my hands and wrists, and it hurt a lot. The mantid told me it was so I wouldn't run away, but they'll help take the pain away, and they did. I remember the pain went away after that. Next, I remember it turned on a bright overhead light in the room, turned my head to the left, 
and put a large cylindrical needle syringe thing behind my right ear. And then everything went white and fuzzy. They said it was a tracker and it was so they could watch me. They told me it was all part of the plan so that they could study and preserve humans for the future. They told me I'm supposed to be a teacher and that my purpose is in the future of this world. Next, I remember being taken by these two smaller beings into an adjacent room where they gave me this small box. When I opened it, it exploded into a fountain of light and inside this light, I saw screens with pictures of trees, mountains, a river, memories, numbers, letters, people walking, symbols, and all kinds of things. But most of all, it showed me my previous life. I don't know what to think of this, so I'd like some help. In this box, this previous life, these beings showed me the house I lived at, how I lost my family of a wife and two kids, and how it ultimately led to my all-consuming sorrow and the taking of my own life. If anyone knows a Marcus Peterson who had a wife and two kids that were about 10 and 6, give or take a few years, died in a car accident, and Mark took his own life. We lived in a small house on a piece of land surrounded by trees, with a front porch covered by a small roof, a screen door, and brown wooden front door. Let me know. After that whole experience, they took me back to this large hangar area. They floated me back down into my room with the bright light, laid me down into my bed, turned around, and I felt them say, we'll be seeing you again soon. And they left. I remember everything 